We're going to try and figure out what this buck is doing. And he's a monster. We call him the Dark Knight. So. All right, I'm talking to Tommy, my bro. I forgot to turn my mic on. see if that was him for one but also we're gonna make preparations for an early season hunt here for September 21st you can see the mineral hole I think that was just I think that was today Let's see if you can hit that this is the ultimate goal does that come out We're dropping 100 grains in. I'm on a system now where I shoot twice and clean. Shooting a uh, 245 grain, 50 caliber, hollow point, power belt, Donnie Monroe special. moved in but it's not supposed to be here up front is pushing through as we speak and we got equipment and all that jazz and we're just trying to wait for this to stop I guess this could be a big time hunt on our friend the dark night Anticipation, precipitation, and I'm a poet and didn't know it. We're caught in between a south wind and a north wind. Anticipating the hunt of possibly getting to see and get on video a 200 inch deer on the hoof tonight. Opening day, Kansas, 2009. I'm, I'm pretty, I got some butterflies going. Just. And it's more of a time thing. It just, you know, I got off work at three, I'm a teacher and, you know, so we're just pushing time and we're hoping everything works out as far as weather-wise here. We're right on the edge of a northwest front that's coming through and we're thinking that's gonna spark some serious activity. But we gotta get through this rainstorm or we're peace out for tonight. September 21st, opening night, Kansas muzzleloader season. I'm a little nerve wracked right now. We're chasing a giant. We got a northwest wind front just came through. We're set up. We're kind of in a only tree we could get in. So it's not the best cover, but it's not telephone pole. That's what we have to work with. Back in the zone, it's the third day of season, 23rd of September. We got a southeast wind tonight, 
we have evidence of not bumping the deer <laughs> the night we hunted. So we're still in the game and tonight with the different wind, who knows, maybe maybe it's on. screwed some things up but we still gotta go we've only got about five days left of season so just throwing everything we're throwing everything but the kitchen sink at them Cavy tonight. We've got three days left to muzzle. <clears throat> we're gonna we're gonna throw our nuts out there tonight. Move on to the bedding area. See if we can uh, catch him kind of milling before he wants to go and feed. So that's the plan. And it's kind of getting do or die. It's got a perfect wind. It's actually too windy, but. I guess these deer don't like to move in the wind. We're gonna find out. This is it. This is where they grow the biggins. 
All right, we just got here. Um, this is kind of the area we've been hunting, and we got standing corn not 50 yards across the road from here. And so they're kind of traveling from west to east. We got a strong westerly wind tonight, and we feel like we need to go to where we think he's bedding. So we're gonna pull our lone wolf set real quick, and uh, we're gonna hustle down there, do a hanging hunt. We're go kind of going in blind because we didn't want to disturb that. So we're hoping we can find a tree and get in it. But it's it's really windy and. I don't know, you know, usually deer don't move in the wind, but we're going to find out one way or another. I'm running out of time. There's only three days left of muzzles, so we got to get it done. So we need to get on it. Follow me. Going up, baby. Pulling the stand. Alright, we've kind of been patterning these bucks, moving up this waterway because everything else is so thick. So, again, we've got a westerly wind blowing in our face. We're going to the south. It's supposed to switch to the north. And we're going to do a hanging hunt, kind of cross over here and get above them where we think they're bedding, or at least where they're coming through to get to the corn across the road. So, we're jacked up, and like I said, we're kind of throwing it all out there. We got to the point where we can see a little bit, but we got a little tree right here that's all we can get up in. So this is gonna have to do, it's gonna give us our vantage point to see where we wanted to. And you know, it's, we're gonna get blown around a little, but that's what we gotta do. So we're going up, let's, let's go. We're, we got probably about an hour before they start moving. We got the buck bedded up right there. Debating whether with this wind to just go up and try and get him up and shoot him. He's probably 100 yards away. I need to range him. I think he just stood up there. So I can Gun falling, be careful. All right, all right, yeah. I'm going for the stalk.
video was promising. I I thought I put it right behind his his shoulder, but I think I smacked him right in the shoulder. It was so close, but I shot him. He freaking uh, some directions, and we just we just now got on some blood and some chunks of something, some some fatty stuff. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's definite that uh, we got to let him go till morning. I think. But we got a, a hit, big deer, so big, it, it's nerve wracking. Anyway, we're gonna, we're gonna pull out of here and definitely do the morning thing. May, maybe see if we can see some more blood. But before we start the full on search, and I don't, I don't wanna bump that thing. And this place is just too thick to mess around. This is about all we have to go on right now. And it's looking pretty grim. Um, you can see, um, in a noxious weed jungle and he could be laying anywhere and the way he was running last night just kind of prouncing like a mule deer it's it's we're not having good good blood tracking we're going on right now so we're going to switch tactics to the check the creek and ponds and spread out and look so well we wouldn't call that good blood but it's the best that we found so far other than a couple chunks of meat and fat uh, this place is absolutely, this is actually really thin for this place where we're standing. This is the nicest, openest spot we've found so far. Everything else is ridiculous. And, uh, that's basically all we've got to go off of so far. All right. We've been looking all morning long. It's about noon and it started to warm up on us. And again, we've been looking kind of in the wrong spot as usual. We ran out of blood. So. We, think, we thought he went down towards the water, walked the creek, did all that, you know, textbook stuff. And eventually you just got to start thinking outside the box. So I went back to where we last found blood, came up on top of this hill and kind of got winded in the face by a dead animal. Like I knew it smelled like something was dead. And sure enough, he's right below here. I, I kind of followed the scent like a freaking dog. And I'm just beside myself right now because this, this animal's special to me. I put a lot of time and effort in hunting this thing. And, I just can't wait to get down there and show you guys it because he's a giant. This is pretty much how I, I found him too. Antlers sticking up. And I mean, how can you mistake that? Absolute giant. Look at this animal. I got the sheds off this buck from last winter and I kind of made it a goal to try and figure out where he was this summer. And he finally showed up on a mineral lick about mid-July. And we just kind of went from there just looking at his travel patterns and, and where I'd seen him last and where the cameras got pictures of him. And we caught him on a day where he, he was standing up in his bed and you know, I've, I've, I've done it once before. If you see a buck of a lifetime and you're sitting in a tree stand, don't always expect them to come to you. Sometimes you just got to make it happen. And I've done it twice now on two giants. And I'll never, never regret not getting down going after something like this because this is just, this is just incredible. Ryan and I put a lot of time in this and what can I say? The shot was a little bit farther back than I wanted, but um, we just got to get this thing out of here because it's starting to warm up and he's starting to stink a little. So we got to take care of this before it gets too hot. But look at the character on this rack. 